Hey everybody, Rob Orgel with Silencer Syndicate. In today's video, I wanted to take a look at rim fire suppressors. Now there's a lot to consider when selecting your rim fire suppressor. Now earlier we made a video about things I wish I had known before buying a rim fire suppressor, and in fact, some things have since changed. One thing I want to mention just as an update to our previous video is I used to look for serviceability out of a 22 suppressor and you're going to see that I'm going to point at a new suppressor today that is not serviceable. And where that used to be an issue, it really isn't much of an issue anymore given the chemicals that people like B&T are giving us that allow us to fill the suppressor with the chemical, let it sit for two to three hours, dump it out, and then have essentially a brand new suppressor again and not need to disassemble it and actually get in there and clean. While some might argue that's easier, some might argue it's not, just note that it's no longer as important that our suppressors be serviceable when we're talking about those 22 suppressors. Now, having said that, we've got about 12 silencers to talk about. The reason why I say about 12 silencers is because one of them isn't present and the other, one of them cannot be passed around. So I'm going to explain those two as well as the rest of the lineup. So first, understand that this is an integral suppressed 22 pistol. D3 LLC made this and it was called the Descent. It's now got a new name that business is called Ronin Arms now, and they still make this type of pistol, as well as a few other manufacturers make integral suppressed 22 pistols. And one, they're awesome, but two, they're a bit specific. Uh, we're going to do a video on integral suppressors. This will be one of the, the hosts that makes its way into that video. Just know that you can't pass it to another gun, obviously. The suppressor is part of the barrel system. So it, it probably isn't a good idea for it to be your first 22 suppressor, because you can't pass it on to other guns. And most of us want to suppress a few rifles and not just one. So I'll make mention that this will be in the video, but it's going to play a small role. The other one is the Gemtech Mist. So we've got three rifles behind me that we're going to use in this testing. The Gemtech Mist is an integral suppressor that you can attach to your 22, your Ruger 1022, or even better, your 1022 takedown. Since the barrel pops off so easy, it's very easy to install the takedown mist. Now, why that suppressor is not in today's video is because about two, three months ago, I had an issue with that suppressor and I sent it in to have them service it. And, uh, you know, I got bad news. I, I called them. They said five weeks approximately. I called them after it had been two months on a Monday. And I said, hey, what's going on with this? And the guy who picked up the phone said, yeah, ooh, this is bad. Let me get a supervisor to reach back to you. I didn't hear anything all week. I called them back on Friday and said, hey, guys, uh, I didn't get a call back. And they said, oh, yeah, we see. Well, oh, geez. Hey, we're sorry. I guess they're having trouble keeping up with supply and demand, as many silencer manufacturers are right now, and I can appreciate that. But they're telling me that there's something wrong with my barrel, and there's an accuracy issue now, and basically it's just not done yet. And they're aware, and everybody's aware, but be patient was the answer I got. So if we're going back and looking at quality control or customer service, that might be a consideration. Gemtech is usually pretty good. I guess with what's going on, they're not doing great. So I don't have that suppressor for today's test. And truth be told, if I did, it would only go on one platform. But I will say that is my favorite 22 rifle to shoot because it is stupid quiet. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show you that in today's video. However, there are many other silencers I have in front of me that are very quiet. So we've got the Silencer Co. Osprey. That's this guy who has since been discontinued. There's the Mercy Firearms Pluto Suppressor, and I like it so much because it's crazy light. We'll talk more on it soon. Then we have the Gemtech Outback. You saw this in a previous video. This has been discontinued, but it's still a great suppressor. The complaint was it's only 22 LR and it's not serviceable. They had that package, you could upgrade it. I didn't know about it, I missed the opportunity, but now it doesn't matter that it's not serviceable. So it's still a great suppressor, even with today's standards. The Silence Co. Switch. This is one of my newer 22 suppressors and I'm very impressed with it. You can set it up in multiple configurations. I won't be doing that in today's video. Many of these suppressors are configurable, but I'm gonna leave them in their full size configuration. My two cents on configurable 22 suppressors is that's kind of a fun thing to tinker with, but I think most people come to settle on full length because they want maximum sound reduction, at least for the 22 suppressors that is. Next is another one of our newer ones. This is the BDE 22 suppressor and um, the guys over at Mr. Silencer, well, it used to be called Mr. Silencer. Now it's called East Valley Tactical. 
It used to be called Mr. Silencer, but East Valley Tactical bought out Mr. Silencer, from my understanding, so they're now one and the same. East Valley Tactical is the one who put out the suppressed range day. And uh, I've been spoke, speaking very closely with Eric. He's, he's a great dude, and he's very knowledgeable. And his two cents was to check out this suppressor because he said he did a day with like 30, 22 silencers. He said, all things considered, this one is his favorite. So it's new to us, and we've just begun testing, so hopefully it performs well uh, today just the same. Next is, and, and this suppressor still exists, but it's not a very common one. This is the Thompson Machine Zephyr. And I think now they call it the Zephyr L. When I bought it, it was just called a Zephyr. And um, that's, that silencer I bought some time ago, however, it is still a very relevant suppressor. Next is the Rex Silencium MG22. And this suppressor is interesting because it's crazy overbuilt, and you get to pick exactly how many baffles you want. As you know, I don't really like running it short. I like it long. But I do want to tell you a quick story on this suppressor. When I first got it, it was throwing rounds way out of whack. And so I took it apart, checked it, couldn't find anything wrong, put it back together, sent a few more rounds, and I actually had an end cap strike on it. So I called them, they very quickly sent me a new end cap, and then I looked baffle by baffle, and I found one that was slightly mismachined. So I removed that one baffle, and since then, everything's been solid. So while I say I like running everything in the long configuration, I found a culprit in that suppressor, so he is down one baffle. And I just put it to the side, and I just don't use it. It's kind of too many baffles already. Anyways, next, the Gemtech Mist, which I mentioned. I don't have that today. And then the D3 LLC Integral Suppress, which is right here. All right, so now that we've talked about what suppressors we're going to be testing, let's talk about what platforms we're going to test them on. So I am of the opinion, and this is just my opinion, you can have your own, is the best 22 pistol to suppress is the Ruger Mark IIs, threes, fours. Those, those are just the best pistols in 22 to suppress, in my opinion. They're my favorite. So I've got two of those so we can go head to head with the same barrel length. One weighs a little bit more than the other, but other than that, sound-wise, we should be able to tick side by side and pick a favorite. Then, obviously, this guy's permanent. Then we also have the 5.7 pistol. So this is the Smith & Wesson version of, of the USG 5.7 pistol, which, um, to get a threaded barrel with, it was just easier to get this guy because he's a, a bunch cheaper. I'm not really a huge advocate of 5.7. I'll talk about that in another video. But for today's testing, we've got a 5.7 pistol. We also have a 5.7 AR-15 upper that takes P90 magazines. We'll be using that for our 5.7 semi-automatic suppressor host. Then we've got a 17 HMR bolt-action rifle. It's a Savage and Rob's left-handed, so you'll notice the bolt is on the left-hand side. And then we have America's favorite, the Ruger 1022. This is the one with the 16-inch barrel with the collapsing folding up stock that's really kind of nifty. Uh, that's going to be our 16-inch version for testing today. So some of these suppressors you won't see in all those tests because they're not rated for 5.7 in some cases or 17 HMR in some cases. So having said that, while there are 12 suppressors, you might only see a few make it to that final stint in testing just for safety reasons. And some people will say, you know, you can do one or two, but we're not going to push or recommend anyone push outside manufacturer recommendations. And if you're not sure what those recommendations are, uh, I'll put this spreadsheet on our website. Feel free to go check out our website. You'll see all the information about what is full auto rated, what's not full auto rated, what has barrel length restrictions. 22s usually don't. Uh, but on some of the 5.7s and such, you might find some barrel length restrictions that you should know about before you purchase that suppressor or put it on said platform. So before we dive into the testing, please take a moment to check out our website. Like, comment, subscribe. Those things go really long ways. Even if you just say for the algorithm or I like your stuff. We live on your guys' support because we're not making any money. We're just having fun sharing information. So please do us that favor with the like, comment, subscribe. If you do want to help us with the costs of what it takes for us to do this, the range time, the ammunition, and all the hours we're pouring into this, the best way you can support us is by going onto our website and grabbing one of our ball caps or one of our t-shirts that says Silencer Syndicate on it. That helps us pay for ammunition and range time. We really appreciate your guys' support. All right, no more uh, waste time let's get to testing hey everybody before we begin shooting i wanted to throw out three quick disclaimers the first one is we're beneath a metal roof so that might make the perceived sound a bit louder than it actually is if we were in a more open environment or maybe had some brush around us we've got a cement floor and a metal roof so that's not going to be the most favorable or conducive to suppressors that's the first thing the second thing is Sp uh, suppressor specific, two suppressors. One, this one, the D3 LLC suppressor, is way overdue for cleaning. So it's not going to sound very good. And in fact, I might only shoot a few rounds because it might buzz my ears. Once it's cleaned, it is a good performer. So disclaimer. The third one is people are going to say, Rob, where's the dead air mask suppressor? Everybody loves the mask. Where's yours? I ordered one back in February. It is June. No, it's July. It's July 2nd. I still don't have it. So I guess I'll get it when I get it, but uh, I don't have one yet. Talk to Dead Air about it. Sorry. Um, 
I do know that that is one of the quietest suppressors out there. I wish I had it, I just don't yet. So on to testing. First one, this is gonna be a little bit loud. This is the D3 LLC, you ready? It's not horrible. It's not bad, didn't hurt my ears. Didn't hurt my ears, but um, on shot two and three, you could hear it hit the wood and then pass through. So you can hear the bullet flying through the air because they're subsonics. They're, I mean, it says standard velocity, but this is subsonic ammunition coming out of this gun. It's around 1,000 feet per second-ish. So there's no shh going down range, but you hear it pop as it hits that piece of wood and then the burn thereafter, which is pretty nifty. All right, let's move into a different suppressor. Okay, so this suppressor I like a whole bunch. This is the Mercy Firearms Pluto. I like it so much because it's so crazy light. Two ounces, when I put it on my scale, it was 2.1 ounces. And it sounds good too. You could definitely hear first round pop, huh? First round pop didn't hurt, but shot two and three was way better. I like this one. That was like a loud stapler. Yeah. All right, this is the Thompson Machine Zephyr. Little bit of a first round pop. Just different tone in that one. Different tones. Maybe a more pleasant tone, but much bigger, much heavier. Historically, this has been one of my favorites. This is the Silencer Coast Sparrow. This thing is really good at sound reduction. Shot one sounded like all the other suppressors, but two and three was like really, really soft, really quiet. So I'm gonna put this one aside as like one of our favorites so far. Yeah, I'd say it's the quietest one yet. Yeah. I think this one's gonna go head to head with the uh, Switch and it's gonna be a tough call. This is the Rex Silencium MG22. Definitely a first round pop. Definitely a first round pop. Shot two and three were great, yeah. but definitely first round pop. And- To be expected. Yeah, it's not, it sounds like the other suppressors. Yeah. Okay, this is the Gemtech um, Outback 2. And it only weighs three ounces and it's very tiny. All in all, I like this one a lot, but it's not gonna be the best sound and I don't think. It's not bad, but it's not the best sounding. Uh, but for three ounces, how tight, it's like the perfect line of like, not too heavy, not too long. Um, it can't do anything more than 22 though. But good suppressor, but not our quietest. Yeah, I agree. So this is the PWS BDE. And this is the one that Eric from East Valley Tactical was saying is his favorite. But he was saying all things considered weight, maintenance, and sound, but sound particularly, he said this one's his favorite. The first one had like a dull thump to it. And then you could see the gas back pressure increases and ejected harder on two and three. No first round pop, and I would say that's up there in sound. That's like one of the best. We shoot that one next to the, uh, the Sparrow in the end, and that's gonna be... Well, the Sparrow, the BDE, and I think this next one yeah. is going to be the, the three contenders. This one has been one of my more recent favorite ones, New, newer of my 22 suppressors. And I like that it's modular in different configurations, but in the long configuration, this thing sounds really good. Still had a first round pop but sounds good all throughout. There's a certain amount of similarity going on, but I would say I would say I'm not going to put him in the final three. Yeah. Okay, this is the last one, and this one is a discontinued suppressor, and this is called the uh, Silencer Co. Osprey Micro, and it's nifty and you had to time it. I'm not gonna time it, it's gonna land how it lands. But the, having to time your thread on device on this is kind of a silly thing. And that's probably one of the bigger reasons why they discontinued it. Ready? That sounded good. I mean, it was like a very low pitch, like probably because of suppressor volume. Yeah, I was gonna say, because of how big that thing is. It's See how it just separated? That's the thread on device. This is the suppressor. So having to like time your thread on device, to, it, it was a pain in the butt to do it. Then I locked tight it. It was a pain in the butt to remove it. It takes that special tool. Cause you really can't remove the field without that tool. So you can see why they discontinued the silencer. So let's, even though it sounded good, let's not include this in our final three. Not really relevant. It's not relevant. It sounds good though. I mean, it, it's up there with good sound, but it's just not relevant. So we're down to two. 
Okay, so we've got our two favorites, the BDE and the Silencer Co. Sparrow. We're gonna put them head to head. These are the different models, but the same barrel length pistols. I put six rounds in each, so I'm gonna do right-handed this gun and then switch hands just so that, in case there's an argument over ejection port. All right, we ready? Yep. Gosh, that's hard to tell. Switch sides here. Sparrow. Yeah, I think the uh, the tone of the the PW or the PWS is just a little more high pitch. Yeah. And the uh, the Sparrow is just deeper and a little more enjoyable in sound. Yeah. Let's be fair. We're splitting hairs, but. If you make me pick, you're right. I hear a deeper tone on the Sparrow. Um, I, I, it's a little bit harder to service and maintenance, and that might be its, its strong point compared to the BDE, because the BDE has got a, a thread cap on the end and you just pull the whole thing apart super easy. But if you're looking for maximum suppression, suppression I think the Silencer Co. Sparrow, as far as it goes to these pistols are concerned, if, if you're a big Mark III, Mark IV kind of guy, I think the Sparrow is still the tried and true favorite of mine. The BDE is real close though. So, I mean, you gotta consider all things about what's rated for what and how much they weigh and you know, size-wise they're almost identical, but weight and other factors might put you onto the BDE, but sound, you're right, I'm going, it's just a, a, a touch deeper in tone that make the Sparrow more pleasant, but both incredibly pleasant. All right, let's move on to the next test. All right, guys, we just finished doing the head-to-head -head testing on the Ruger Mark III, Mark IV pistols with all the 22 suppressors we have, which I think in that test was 11 silencers. The tried and true is still my favorite. Now we're gonna start, and I believe this is an 18.5 inch Ruger. We're gonna start our rifle testing. We're gonna run through all of them again, and then we'll move into the 5.7 and the 17 HMR. Gosh, that sounds good. That was the Mercy Firearms Pluto, the two ounce suppressor that you can't even feel on the end of your gun. This thing is sweet. Uh, two, two ounces, I, I mean, I hear the bolt running. I don't hear the gunshot at all. I hear the bullet passing through the paper downrange. We put up a paper at 50 yards, so you can hear it hit paper and then hit the berm. Um, this is, it's gonna be hard to find a favorite suppressor outside of this. All right, so the Silencer Coast Sparrow, our favorite from the pistols. Try it on the 1022. That one still sounds the best. I think that sounds a hair, just like a hair, better than the Mercy Firearms Pluto that we only just tested. But I mean, it's up there. Yeah, I'd agree. It's, I it's mean, the best so far. Yeah, tone and also volume wise, it's best. Yeah, but it's not a huge difference. Yeah. If you tested this on a separate day, you'd never know. Like you said, I mean, we're really cutting it. Uh, Really we're splitting, hairs. splitting hairs. Yeah, we're splitting hairs. I mean, and for its weight, I might still like the Mercy Fire. For the pistols, definitely this guy. For the rifle, I mean, I could argue either side. Okay, BDE. Okay, here we go. BDE 22. It sounds the same as the, yeah. I mean, again, it's just a little more high pitch. That's, that's the only thing I noticed. It's just a, I'm not sure I could hear the difference. So I guess as far as rifles are concerned, if you're between the Sparrow and the BDE, I mean, I'd pick the BDE because it's lighter and it's more serviceable, easier serviceable. So and still that Mercy Firearms that only weighs two ounces is sure appealing. Okay, here we go. Splitting hairs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, it's an older model. It's a bit long. I could see not wanting the suppressor, but it sounds just as good as the rest of them. Um, I mean, if this silencer was 200 bucks and the other one was 400 bucks, that'd be your answer. Yeah, I think a lot of these, if it came down to a, a special sale or something like that, might be the determining factor. Yeah, you show me a buy one, get one, and then you're a rifle guy, then who cares? But you show me a buy one, get one, and you're a Mark IV pistol guy, well, okay, I can see really wanting the Sparrow or the BDE. I mean, I'd love to test the mask too. Okay, so this is the Rex Silencium MG22. And you remember I had issues with this before, so let's see how it goes on a rifle. Like all of them, no first round pop, real smooth, real, real quiet, real heavy. But, you know, just sound wise, it sounds great. 
yeah, I think they really sell that one on how rugged it is compared to, uh, I mean, yeah, drive over it with your truck. Like and the MG sounds like machine gun 22. So it's like, I mean, they even say on their website, like, scratch it with your knife. Don't worry about it. So, I mean, that it's heavy. Okay, fine. Okay, this is the Gemtech Outback 2. Uh, they don't make the silencer anymore. And it sounds great. I mean, their goal in this suppressor was to find the perfect balance between size, weight, length, and they nailed it. I mean, three ounces, not serviceable, but other than that, it's great. It's hard to compete with the Pluto because, you know, all 3D printed, printed titanium. Two more. This one is the Silencer Coast Switch, and I expect this one to perform. I think if I had to pick a silencer today, this would be within my top three, just because it's nifty that it's so configurable, and it is very quiet. And again, configuring is fun, not always appropriate. They're all starting to sound the same, especially on a rifle configuration. They're starting to sound the same. I mean, 22s in general on a rifle are phenomenal for a lot of great reasons. And it's, it's hard for us to really delineate much different as we're doing this test. Yeah, I think if you were to do a blind test with many of these, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. I agree, yeah. Yeah, they, they are awful similar when you're talking an 18 inch barrel. I might run out of ammo on this magazine soon. Look at that time perfectly by coincidence. So that's the Osprey 22. There's a lot of good suppressor volume in there. So it, like the pistols, it sounds really good, but it's a discontinued silencer. So I don't want to spend too much time talking about it, but if you have one, it's still a great piece of technology. It sucks that you have to time it. It's probably going to come untimed. Oh, good, it didn't. Um, but that interior thread device is kind of a, it's a silly design for today's world, but it's still a great silencer. I think this came with one of those buy one, get one deals back on Silencer Co's web shop, website. I'm not upset that I have it, but it's not my favorite. Okay, that's all of them. What's our favorite? Wow, look at that. That was the last round. Time that perfect. Yeah, so still say the, the Sparrow. Sparrow. Quickly, uh, closely followed by the BDE. Yeah, Sparrow then BDE again. Yep, I agree. Okay, so we just finished up doing the 1022 and the Ruger Mark IV pistols. We went head to head with essentially 11 different silencers. And what's odd is consistently between the rifle and pistol, we picked our favorite number one and favorite number two silencers. Now, not all of them are 17 HMR, but the ones that are 17 HMR rated, we're gonna roll through those now. That's five of them, and we're gonna look for a difference. Okay, this is the Silencer Coast Sparrow 17 HMR. We'll do two rounds so we get that last first round pop out. It doesn't hurt my ears, but I wouldn't want to shoot it all day. Yeah, yeah I'd say that the, uh, especially on that second shot, I kind of noticed it starting to get to my ears a little bit, but. Yeah, it's not, it's not horrible, but not all day for sure. Great for hunting though, I'll bet you. Yeah, that, it's that supersonic bullet. I mean, it's a lot more than a 22. Okay, Rex Silencium, MG22. That did seem louder. Yes, that was yeah. not a good time. No, that MG22 is quiet on 22s, but 17 HMR, I mean, the Silencer Coast Sparrow has shined throughout all of our tests, and I think that might be the one where it just shined the most. Let's see, the switch, the switch and the BDE should be close contenders, I'm thinking, along with the Sparrow on this one. All right, here we go. Silencer Coast Switch, 17 HMR. That's not bad at all. Better than the last one. Better than the last one. Awfully similar to the first one. So let's say the Switch and the Sparrow are, are head to head right now. Okay, the BDE. BDE has been solid taking number two place through all of our tests so far. Let's see if she shines on this one. Now that's pitchy. I don't like that. I don't that's, know is that much louder, but like, no. I mean, there's a slight pitch difference in the hand, in the uh, pistol, but definitely much more apparent in this one. 
Yeah, definitely pitchy. I think so far, I mean, we got one more to go, but I think so far, the Sparrow and the Switch are the, the two favorites of mine so far. Okay, Silencer Co. Osprey 22. No, that was kind of pitchy too. Okay, so I'm calling it. It's up oh, there we go. We just separated the mount again. I'm calling it between the Sparrow and the Switch. If I have to pick one, the Sparrow is just a little bit quieter on everything else. On this one, they were neck and neck. I can't tell a difference. Same? Yeah, I think the 17 HMR really kind of kind of bared out some of the, uh, the, the major differences that weren't so apparent in the uh, smaller configurations. Yeah, well, on the 5.7, see what happens. Okay, so now we're on to the 5.7 uh, ammunition. This is the FN blue-tipped ammunition, and we've got a 16-inch gun. This thing is called, I believe, like an LEM 5.7. It's designed to replace your AR-15 upper receiver. Kind of a weird thing. I thought it was nifty because I, I was able to purchase the full auto bolt carrier and put it in my M16 registered machine gun so I could have a full auto 5.7. Because I think 5.7 truly shines best in full auto and be able to run the 50 round mags makes it kind of a cool thing. But let's see how she suppresses. This is the Rex Silencium MG22 suppressor. See how it goes. Definitely some first round pop. Didn't hurt my ears. Um, I mean, but we're, we're coming up on like a 5.56 five, situation where if you were to do more than two or three of these, like I should probably be wearing hearing protection for the rest of the test. I'm not going to, but I probably should. I, I, that, was, that was a bit intense. Not hurt, didn't hurt, but it was a bit intense. It was very loud. Yeah. But we had already decided that this one's a bit pitchy, even on the 17 HMR stuff. So hopefully the next ones are a bit more pleasant because the last three are down to the favorite three. Just a lot of thread. That's the other thing about 5.7. And I'm going to talk more about this when we do a 5.7 video, but when you step into 5.7, you can do 5.56 five, suppressors. It's, it's not offensive to a 5.56 five, suppressor. On a 17 HMR, a 5.56 five, suppressor is a lot of weight on the end of a literal rim fire suppressor. When you step into 5.7, you're stepping outside of rim fire. You're now into center fire. So you can use a 5.56 five, suppressor and you'll have really good results. So, you know, the whole idea of putting a rim fire suppressor on a 5.7 is, in my opinion, questionable if you have 5.56 five, suppressors. You could just use those if you wanted to. And in fact, maybe we finish this test by screwing one of those 5.56 five, cans on and seeing how it performs. All right, this is the BDE-22. That was a lot better compared to the MG-22. What do you think? Still very high pitch. It's still high pitch. Uh, yeah, to me, it feels like a 5.56 five, on a full-size 5.56 five, suppressor to my ears. Yeah. So if you're going to do this all day, I, and if you're predator hunting, you know, you're going after fox or coyote close-range headshots, you'd be okay for a couple shots. Oh, yeah. But if you were to do mags worth, I don't think it'd be a good idea. Okay, thread it on enough. Here we go. It wasn't bad, but it's still not good. Yeah. Of the ones so far, I would say that's the best. Yeah. And I'm also thinking that I'm deciding for the pistol portion, I'm going to wear my hearing protection. Yeah. That one was very similar to the, uh, the last, just not quite as high pitch. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing about suppressors is decibel readers is a single data point. And while everybody wants quantifiable data, and so do I, I want to look at a chart and pick my favorite based off the chart. The reality is sound is hard to quantify. So its tone can be more important than its volume. I think that that one performed a hair better. So we're back to the Silence Coast Sparrow. Silence Coast Sparrow seems to have taken first place in every category so far as, as far as sound reduction goes. All right, let's switch to the pistol. All right, so we wanted to throw on a 5.56 five, suppressor real quick. This is the Grunt Mini, just because it's easy to thread on. Sounds a whole lot better, especially the first round as it eat up all the oxygen inside. It's a mini can, so it's not the best of them, but I mean, 
definitely, if I was going to shoot 5.7 all day, it would be with a 5.56 suppressor, not a rimfire suppressor. It's rimfire suppressors are great for rimfires. That it can do 5.7 is cool, but we're stepping outside of what it was designed to do, and we're getting away with sort of suppressing a gun. It meets the restrictions, but it's still, I don't think I'd advise running a, a rimfire suppressor on a 5.7. Stick to 5.56 on 5.7, in my opinion, but you do what you think is right. Okay, I'm not sure if anybody's done this yet, so we figured we're here and we got the toys, we may as well try it. This is the Flow 5.56K on a 5.7 16-inch gun. See how she sounds. It's not, all, I, I don't love Huxworks. Back pressure is great, I get, they did a great job, but sound, I'm not impressed with these suppressors. They're just not quiet. Even on 5.7. Yeah, that was a little rough on the ears. Yeah. Let's do one more can. We're here. So this is the KGM 5.56A1. And I've proof that this is definitely a low back pressure suppressor. Not terribly quiet, but that's been on 5.56. I don't know if anybody's put this to 5.7 yet. Sure is tiny. Man, it's loud like a Huxworks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's better than a rimfire can, I think. Maybe we should do just one more and get that old school AAC M4 Mini on here. Which this, this is what I paired this gun with some time ago. I like this combination. Mini is not terribly quiet, but with 5.7, it kind of balances. Here we go. That's been the best so far. Yes. Yeah, that's the best. A standard 5.56 five, suppressor, even a short one, sounds real good on 5.7. The rim fire stuff, I just, I think you're better off running an actual full size suppressor when you're doing the rifle platform. Pistol is going to be a, a lot more challenging. You're going to find out how much I do or don't like suppressing 5.7 pistols. All right, so we've got our 5.7 pistol. This is the Smith Wesson MP. Uh, I'm going to tell you a secret before we begin this one. I've already done testing on this pistol, and I don't like suppressing 5.7 pistols. They just they don't feel good. They have a huge recoil impulse with that added suppressor. I think that we're pushing outside the parameters of what our rimfire suppressor is designed for. I think it's home on a 22 pistol. I think it's home on a 17 HMR rifle or 22 rifle. But when you go to 5.7, you're pushing the limits. And when you put it in a short barrel on a pistol, I don't specifically enjoy, I don't particularly enjoy shooting them but we'll get through the four we have to see what they uh perform like wearing hearing protection was a good choice how are you feeling damien i feel like i made a bad choice you made a bad choice yeah definitely hearing protection on the five seven ow it's hot as all get up man i mean i i ran the other as fast and even on the rifle fast and i can screw it right off but the barrel is just so darn short ill-advised Okay, all right, next one, this is the uh, Silence Co. Switch. The one we did a minute ago is the Sparrow. It's been our favorite so far, but it's not tolerable on such a short configuration in 5.7. So I am wearing hearing protection for this one, and uh, I don't like doing it. I don't like doing it. There's a huge POI shift. I mean, it's going way up north. Uh, instead of hitting the target, I'm seeing a three-foot high impact at 100 yards. I'm not getting an end cap strike, but just the, the movement in the barrel of this thing unlocking and doing what it does, I just don't think 5.7 pistols and rim fire suppressors are a good mix. And in fact, 5.7 pistols is arguably a good idea in the first place. I know you guys are going to ask me to make a video on that, and maybe I will. But I think 5.7 has a very special place on this earth or on the battlefield, and it's not particularly in pistols. Sorry if I hurt your feelings. All right, here we go. BDE-22 going on a 5.7 pistol. This thing's going to get real hot, I'm sure, because it's, I mean, it looks good on there but they're not that fun to shoot, and that's why I'm wearing hearing protection. Yeah, I mean, it, it had an POI impact. Uh, it had an impact shift of about a foot high. It's hot as all get up. It's hard to unscrew. With just three rounds, it's hard to unscrew. Um, again, I'm just going to go ahead and say this is ill-advised. It might be rated for it, but I don't recommend doing it. 5.7 pistols just shouldn't see suppressors. Uh, it's cool, but it's just not, I don't love it. Okay, last one, and then I get to say I'm done with this because I don't particularly love 5.7 pistol suppress. I should say that like three more times, shouldn't I? All right, this is the uh, Rex Silencium MG22. Okay, on 5.7, that thing wins, hands down. 
I mean, it stayed on track. I didn't get a massive POI shift. It sounded better, even through the Ear Pro, it sounded better, and it didn't over back pressure like the other silencers did. So, you know, here I am putting my foot in my mouth, how much I hate shooting 5.7 suppressed. I still don't like shooting 5.7 suppressed, but if I was going to do it like again, it would definitely be with this suppressor. So if you're a 5.7 pistol guy and you're looking for a rim fire dual suppressor, the Rex Silencium MG22 is the one. The other three, equally I did not like, equally you need hearing protection. But this one, I think, takes the cake when it comes to 5.7 pistols. And that's a surprise to me. I was starting to dislike the suppressor. I guess it now has a home. Just for the sake of doing one without the suppressor, so I can feel how soft it, so I can remember how soft it shoots, and so that we can kind of hear that sound. They're loud. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit loud. I mean, it's a 5.7. But at the same time, I mean, the bullets are impacting at the 100-yard berm at what I'm aiming at not one to three foot high. And all the suppressors we tested gave me an impact shift by one to three foot up with the exception of the Rex Silencium MG22. So I think for 5.7 pistols, the MG22 takes the cake. It's the first time it's taken first place in something. That's, that's cool for that suppressor. Alrighty, so now that we're back in our studio and back into the nice air conditioning, we're gonna break down the information that we found while on the range. Now this was a pretty elaborate test being that we did the 22 pistols and we're even able to shoot side by side to listen for a different, to listen for a difference to include that first round pop. And what's interesting is we systematically chose the same suppressor in just about each scenario with the exception of one as to which one sounded our favorite. Now understand that there's a lot of factors here that may or may not apply to you and I do want your feedback. I want your feedback into what suppressor I did not include that you wish I had included because I'm sorry this is what I have. We're working on getting more but this is currently the 22 silencers I have. I know that BNT is sending us one. I know that the dead air mask is on the way. Um, I also know um, Innovative Arms is sending us their titanium slingshot suppressor. So, so there's more coming, but if there's other ones that were not in this and you would like to see specific silencers, please let us know which silencers that we missed out on and we'll reach out to those companies and run this test again. Uh, now, when we run this test again, I also want your input as to how important the 5.7 pistol is to you. Because to be honest, that's not really a pistol I enjoy suppressing. Um, I, I found a lot of issues doing that. It's just not very interesting to me. 17 HMR, I think that's a valuable thing to suppress with your 22 can. And then, you know, before we go too much further into the findings of our test, I wanted to take a minute to discuss where I like my 22 suppressors to live. And the truth is I have the most fun with a 22 suppressor on the end of the Ruger Mark III's and Mark IV pistols. I think that's just a great training tool. I think it's a lot of fun. And I think, you know, depending upon where you live, if you've got rattlesnakes or you've got, you know, varmint in your backyard, it's a really convenient way of handling, you know, nuisance problems. Also, if you've got a scoped rifle like a 1022 or a 17 HMR, uh, you can really handle some of those nuisance varmint, for example, at further distances. Some people coyote hunt with them. Per personally, I don't feel like it's enough caliber for coyote. You really got to make a good headshot, and not always does a coyote stand still for you. And the worst thing is when a coyote comes in, sees you, and busts out. And if you had had a 5.56, maybe you would have made a good hit, but because it was just a little further or something like that. So I'm not a big fan of really using these for much more than, like, say, prairie dogs and that kind of stuff. So nuisance animals, not necessarily predators. But if you're a predator hunter and you rock out to 17 HMR, hey, no qualms here. I think, you know, in some states it restricts you to that, particularly at night anyways. So we got to make do with what we make do with. But in the end, I just wanted to voice that my favorite place for these suppressors to live is on those little 22 pistols. And I might investigate a few more pistols. We do have the small Beretta pistol. And there are some suppressors that don't work well on that. And there are some that just work great. So if you want us to visit that topic, please let us know. Having said that, this is just one space of this review. There's also the weight, are they full auto rated? Is there barrel length restrictions? There's a lot to consider when purchasing your 22 suppressor. And if you want access to that information, we've already created a spreadsheet of all the different suppressors, how much they weigh, how long they are, what they're capable of and not capable of, and if they're full auto rated or not. So if you're interested in that information, like going through it and poking around, feel free to check out our website. If you want to support our channel, just by hopping over to that website and clicking around really does build a lot of merit within the community for us. In addition to that, if you want to help financially support our channel by picking up one of our hats or one of our shirts that says Silencer Syndicate on it, that really does help us because right now we're all out of pocket. We get a case of ammo a month, and that's really it. The rest of this is all out of pocket. We're paying our own range fees and we're not making any money. Uh, no manufacturer has given us a penny. We're just working hard to create fun stuff and share our experiences with you so that you make a good purchase because this is fun for us. But if you don't mind, that support does go a really long way for us.
All right, so our findings. When we went on the Ruger Mark IV, that's that little pistol, we had two same barrel lengths and rotated back and forth, even switched hands that we had a fair comparison across the board. And in the end, the Silencer Co. Sparrow, we decided was the quietest and the best sounding suppressor. Now, I know a lot of guys are fans of the Dead Air Mask. I don't have one of those. Maybe I will soon. I've been waiting since February. Uh, in second place, we decided was the BDE-22 suppressor. Um, that suppressor took second place in a handful of spots. Next was the 1022. So on this one, it was the 18.5 inch. We landed a handful of bullets and then kind of decided which was our favorite. And that got tough because on an 18.5 or whatever the barrel length is on that one, I mean, they all sound really good. Some of them are a bit pitchy, but they all sounded really good. And first round pop, isn't so obvious on the rifle platform. So we were really splitting hairs, but in the end we decided the same results, that we liked the Silencer Crow Sparrow the best and the BDE took second place. That's not to say that all the other suppressors didn't do good because they all did great on the rifle. The pistol I think was the more noticeable stuff. Okay, when we moved to the 17 HMR, we saw some change. One, yet again, the Silencer Crow Sparrow was our favorite suppressor, but next was actually the Silencer Crow Switch, this guy. So instead of the second place being the BDE, Again, very much so splitting hairs. The, the switch shined a little bit better than the BDE, but splitting hair is very hard to tell. So if you had one and not the other, I'm sure you're gonna be happy with it. It's, it's a minor detail. The next is in a 5.7 pistol. Now, we had to remove a lot of suppressors from this experiment because some of them were rated for 22, some of them 17 HMR. Very few of them were rated for 5.72. So we only had, I believe, five suppressors to test. And in the end, we picked well, we didn't like any of them. <laughs> we didn't like how any of them worked on a 5.7 pistol. And just as I was wrapping up that video saying, hey, I don't like 5.7s to be suppressed, particularly as a pistol, uh, we put the MG22 on from Rex Silencium, and that one actually performed really well. It sounded good, it looked good. Uh, POI shift is shouldn't really be a thing, but on that pistol, for some reason, I'm seeing one foot to three foot north at 100 yards. When I don't have the suppressor on, we tested at the end of the video, I mean, I'm hitting little rocks at 100 yards with it. It's an accurate, effective pistol, but I'm getting north POI shifts with these suppressors, uh, with the exception of the MG22 suppressor from Rex Silencium. It sounded the best, and it had the least amount of impact shift. So I would say that that is definitely the place to go if you're into suppressing 5.7 pistols, which I'm really not into that. Uh, next is the 5.7 rifle. So we have a rifle, we screwed all these suppressors off to the ones that were applicable, and I think in the end, they all were kind of abusive to the ears. So I think we all decided that if I had to pick maybe the MG22 again, maybe the Silencer Crow Sparrow, but if you put a 5.56 silencer on your 5.7 rifle, you'll get so much better results. It, sure, it's a little bit heavier in a lot of cases, but I mean, if you can put a 5.56 silencer on your 5.7 rifle, I think you'll be a lot happier. So even though your rim fire suppressor can do it, is ready to do it, I would recommend that you don't do it. Just, just because it can doesn't mean you should. Um, so understand rim fire is, you know, 22, uh, 22 mag, 17 HMR. Center fire is 5.7 by 28, and that's that's capable, but I, I just don't recommend it. In the end, if you are a 5.7 guy with a rifle, check out getting either a 5.7 specific suppressor that's really more designed to contain that explosion, or just step it up to one of your 5.56 cans, screw that on the end, and I think you'll be a lot happier. Uh, same thing with the pistol. There's a handful of rifle suppressors that are light enough, uh, like from BNT, that you can screw those on there and, and be okay, but I personally just don't think it's all that great of a performer. So the end state is 17 HMR and 22, 22 rifles, pistols. I think that's a great place for these things to live. Move into a 5.7 pistol, I don't recommend it. 5.7 rifle, I don't recommend it. Uh, but if you're into it, it'll work. Um, and if, if you, you know, want our data, our data we chose that the MG22 suppressor kind of did better in the 5.7 category than the other guys. Uh, but as far as 17 HMR goes and really everything else from the collection I currently have, we decided the Silencer Coast Sparrow was really the top performer in everything that should be applicable. I apologize again, my 22 mist is, is out of pocket. It's being worked on by Gemtech. That suppressor, I mean, that system, because it's an integral suppressor, but it really is very impressively quiet. So if you already have a 22 suppressor and you're thinking, well, I want just the craziest, quietest, that, that 22 mist, I would, I wish I had had the chance to show it to you today. Whenever I get it back, I will make a video, uh, maybe a follow-up video and, and show you that if you're gonna be on a 22 rifle, if you're a 1022 kind of guy, that Gemtech Mist, I mean, it, and it's priced well too. Uh, it really is a good system. It keeps the barrel 16 inches with the suppressor, so just a phenomenal system. Uh, highly recommend that one. But again, 
for your first 22 or second 22 suppressor, you might want something more versatile. So where we landed pretty unanimously, yet again, was the Silencer Coast Sparrow. I think left to my own devices, it would be hard to say that if I didn't do head-to-head -head testing, so I'm glad we got to do that today. But I do wanna throw in one more little bit. Um, the Mercy Firearm Suppressor, this little two ounce silencer, I mean, I really like that suppressor. It's very similar to the Gemtech Outback 2, except it can handle a little bit more. It's you know two ounces instead of three ounces, and it is an impressive silencer. To, so to screw it on the end of the uh, Mark IV light, I mean, this pistol is very light. Adding that super light suppressor is just a, a killer combo. I absolutely love that setup. While it's not the quietest, it is still a, a great setup. So if you want to say, well, sound isn't everything, Rob, I agree with you. Um, if you're after sound, the Sparrow, love it. If you're after lightweight and sound, I think the Mercy Firearms is really a top contender. If you said, Rob, pick two, everything else goes away, I would, it would be hard for me, but the first one would definitely be the Silencer Coast Sparrow. The next one would be a battle between the Mercy Firearms and the BDE-22. I really don't know. I don't know, three ounces is crazy, uh, two ounces, sorry, two ounces is crazy light, but I don't know, both of these silencers are really great cans. So if you have either of these, don't definitely don't feel like you need to go out and get a Sparrow because it's not that different in my opinion, but that's just based on my experiences from today. If you like this video, please do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, as I mentioned before, it really goes a long way for us. Keep in mind, this is a community. Don't pee in the communal pool. Be friendly to people. There's a lot of new people in the silencer world and in the gun world. It's our job as seasoned guys to kind of help them along, help them understand, and more than anything, keep them safe as they go down this rabbit hole and learn to play with these fun, exciting little toys. All right, as always, stay safe, and we'll see you in the comments section.